welcome to another video from the Enphase Learning and Development Team. My name is Jarrett Skeffington, and today's video will walk you through the customer's dashboard within Installer Portal. The first thing that you'll want to do is log into the Installer Portal, navigate to your customer site, and then look for the Dashboard button in the upper right hand side of the screen. The Summary tab is broken into multiple sections, so it's easy to find what you're looking for. Starting with the system section at the top, the site has battery storage mode set to full backup. Below that shows you the average state of charge for all of the batteries that are installed. This number will fluctuate throughout the day depending on how the site is configured. If a storage reserve has been set, you'll see that setting under the state of charge set point. In this case, the SOC has been set to 50%. Underneath the grid profile section, you're going to see the grid profile that has been set for this site. Because this site is in California, notice that we have the California Rule 21 profile set. If you are outside of California, make sure you are using the correct grid profile for the devices installed in your area. For sites with storage, there are two options for the backup type that are set during the commissioning phase. The two options are partial home backup and whole home backup. In this example, you can see the site has the backup type set to partial home backup. The set point section shows you the level at which the storage and PV are charging or discharging in terms of power. This number is a percentage. For example, a value of negative 100 being displayed means the battery is charging at 100% power, while a value of 100 means the battery is discharging at 100% power. Similar is the PV set point. Most sites will see the PV set point as 100 unless there's a power export limit requirement at the site. StormGuard is an in-phase feature that monitors the severe weather condition alerts issued by the National Weather Service. If a severe weather alert is active in your area, it prioritizes the energy storage to protect you from weather-related grid outages. The StormGuard feature can be in one of the two following states, enabled or disabled. When enabled, the StormGuard monitors severe weather condition alerts issued by the National Weather Service. If a warning is issued for your location, it overrides your battery profile and sets it to full backup mode. This allows your full battery capacity to be reserved for use during the potential grid outage. When this is set to disabled, the severe weather condition alerts are not monitored for your area. If there's an active alert, you may face a blackout due to weather-related grid outages if your batteries are out of charge. The next section we're going to talk about is the gateway section. Starting in the upper left, you'll see that we have the serial number and status. The status is the connection status to Enlighten or the installer portal. Currently, this example shows that we have a normal connection and that means that that gateway has an internet connection and it is reporting data to the installer portal. If we've lost an internet connection, we would see that status showing not reporting. To the right of that, we'll see the last report. The last report date and timestamp represents when the gateway last communicated to the installer portal. Underneath that is the software version currently running on that gateway. Not all gateways will have the same software version, so bear that in mind. If your gateway has lost its internet connection for an extended period of time, the gateway needs to backfill all of that data that's been stored on it during that outage. During this process, you will see the date caught up to. This date is reflecting where it's at within that process of backfilling the data. Once all of that data has been sent to the cloud, you will notice the date caught up to and the last report date be very similar in times. This means that all of your data is now current. Under the connection type, you'll see that there are three different ways to connect your gateway to an internet connection. You can use Wi-Fi, cellular modem, or ethernet. The icons to the left of the words will tell you which one is active, which ones are idle, and which ones are not available. In this example here, you will see that the Wi-Fi is connected, but not being used currently. The cell modem is the active one, and there is no ethernet connection. This site is unique because it's got two different envoys running, using two different internet connection types. The one on the top is using our cellular modem and the gateway below it is using the homeowner's Wi-Fi. Each of those are reporting data independently using two different internet connection types. The next section we're going to talk about is the communication section. This section contains information about all of the communication paths that we have between the various devices. These paths will include the communications between the IQ gateway, the system controller, the IQ batteries, and the microinverters. 
The first communication path we're going to talk about is the wireless communications link. This essentially is your comms kit. And if you see under the status section, you'll see that this one is connected. That just means that it's plugged into the gateway, it's got power, and it's connected. The cellular modem section refers to the cellular modem that is connected to the IQ gateway. The things you'll want to look for within this section are the signal strength, the last report date, the status, and the planned end date. Starting with the signal strength, you want to make sure that you've got a good, reliable communication signal strength here. Just like your cell phone, one to five bars, you want to have at least two to three bars to have good, adequate communications back and forth to the cell towers so you can relay all of that data to the installer portal. The last report date and timestamp is going to tell you when that cell modem last reported data. The device status is going to tell you the status of the cell modem. Is it normal or not? The last thing I'm going to point you to is the plan end date. The date listed here is going to tell you when that data plan is set to expire for the cell modem. Under the IQ system controller is where you're going to find everything about the system controller information. Starting with the serial number, the device status, RSSI or signal strength, its current operation mode, firmware, and the last report time. RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. Essentially, this is your signal strength between the IQ system controller and the IQ gateway using the wireless comms kit. The higher the signal strength, the more reliability in your communications between those devices. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the last report section. This is the date and timestamp of when the system controller last communicated data to the IQ gateway. Within the IQ battery section, you'll see similar columns as above. You'll see the serial numbers for each of the batteries installed, along with the status of each of them. The status will tell you if the batteries are operating normally or not. The RSSI values will tell you the communication signal strength between the comms kit and that individual battery. If the batteries show the status of batteries not reporting, the RSSI values will tell you which one of those batteries is having the communications issue. You can use the RSSI values to determine if you need to add in a range extender to extend the range of that communications between the comms kit and that battery for greater communications reliability. Under the operation mode column, this is where you will see which mode the batteries are currently configured and operating in. In this example, you will see that you have multi-mode on grid. Other operation modes you may see will be system up, update in progress, grid tied, grid tied idle, and PCU update in progress. The LED status column will display what's being displayed on the actual hardware in the field. The nice thing about this column is that you will see a blue informational circle to the right of the text. Clicking on this will take you to the cheat sheet of what the various colors of the LEDs represent. The SOC column is the battery state of charge. In this example here, you'll see each of these individual batteries displaying their state of charge as 100% and one is 99%. These values will fluctuate throughout the day depending on the battery's configuration. The number of microinverters is in reference to the number of installed microinverters within the battery. The three batteries installed on this site each have four IQ8 microinverters. If any of those devices were not reporting properly, that would be displayed under the not reporting column. The meters installed on site will show in the next section labeled end phase integrated meter. The status will show if the meter is operating normally or if there's a meter error. The meter column indicates if the meter was enabled or not. There may be an instance where you will see the status of CT measurement issue, and this would be an indicator of a CT installed with reverse polarity, a phasing issue, or if there were no consumption CTs installed, but they were enabled in the installer app. The configuration type is set during the commissioning process and will tell the gateway how to calculate the true consumption. The two options that you'll see in this section is load with solar and load only. If this was set incorrectly during the commissioning phase, you can always change it remotely under the gateway link in the device button of the system page. The last section on the summary page is the microinverter section. This section provides basic information about the microinverters that are installed on the site. In this example, notice that there are two models of the inverters and how many of each of them. 
The signal strength that shows in this section is the average signal strength for all of the inverters. A low signal strength may indicate that the inverters are having a hard time communicating with the gateway. This may cause issues with the gateway sending and receiving data from the microinverters and is typically seen with the system status of microinverters not reporting. Now that I've walked you through the summary page, you should have a better understanding of the data being displayed for each of the devices on that site. You can put this new knowledge to work and quickly identify potential issues for your customers.